during your time in office, what were some of the issues that, uh, that you were very strongly uh, um, promoting with regards to legislation? First, it may be a little jarring that I'm now wearing a different shirt and tie than five seconds ago during our last question, but that's all part of the process here in Harrisburg. Um, Thank you. No, I, um, uh, well, a lot of things are important to me. Uh, the environment is probably my top priority, um, and I'm on the Environmental Resource and Energy Committee. I've had the opportunity to pass some good environmental legislation. Health care is very important, particularly the fact that uh, 800,000 Pennsylvanians don't have access to health care, and, you know, there's a some people say, well, you know, uninsured people can go to the emergency room. And I get that email a lot. That's actually untrue. I mean, you have to, if you're hit by a bus, they have to stabilize you, but they don't have to uh, give you a liver transplant or chemotherapy or dialysis or um, physical therapy or psychological treatment or anything. Like that. You just don't get that if you're not insured unless you get some lucky and there's some charity situation. So uh, expanding access to health care has been big. Um, I've been very involved in a political reform issue called gerrymandering reform or redistricting reform which is very arcane, probably more than you want to hear about now, but essentially it's an effort to make our elections more competitive and open. And then education. Uh, I have two young children in school. Uh, my daughter just started her in second grade, little guys in kindergarten. And so, uh, you know, we want our schools to be the best and, and uh, give them every opportunity. So those are four issues I've been big on. I've been big on some civil rights issues. Civil rights are very important to me. It's why I got interested in politics in the first place during the civil rights movement. And so um, I've been fighting to uh, expand civil rights to uh, not only, you know, the, the historic racial religious groups, but also based on sexual orientation and other forms of discrimination. I want to, want to do what we can to eliminate that. Um, and, you know, uh, not only access to health care, but public health issues like the, I was very active in the smoking ban, indoor smoking ban, so employees don't have to breathe poison in order to keep their jobs. So um, there's been a lot going on, and there's always new issues coming up uh, that, you know, you sort of didn't predict you'd be a part of, but um, one circumstance or another, whether it's the committee you're on, or the, um, you know, just the, uh, the, con the needs of your constituents or just the angle of the issue that you didn't anticipate sort of draws you in. And suddenly you find yourself very active in an issue that was, uh, I'll give you an example. Um, I have a bill now, an issue I got involved in, to, pro to prohibit the widespread distribution of antibiotics to, far to healthy farm animals because that causes people to be exposed to these antibiotics and creates more drug resistant strains of disease. So that's the thing I'm working on now, which, you know, if you told me anything about farming, you know, a few years ago, I, you know, it's, I never would have predicted I'd be involved. But it has broader ramifications and it become very interesting. So, um, you know, there, the things are always sort of coming your way. Mm -hmm. Um, tell me about some of the frustrations that come with the, uh, with the territory, specifically when you're part of the minority party well, in the House and um, um, trying to, you know, get your bills and your legislation through. Yeah. I've been in the min minority. My first, uh, I've been here six years. The first four years I was in the minority. The last two I've been in the majority. It's much more fun to be in the majority. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you're in the minority, 90% of your job is coming to work and voting no on stuff that's going to pass anyway. Uh -huh. um, you can give a speech. And I used to look at my job that way. I used to say, you know what, my job is when we pass bad legislation is to get up on the floor and give a speech as to why it's bad legislation and create a record, make a case that maybe in the future hold sway, mm -hmm. you know, so this doesn't go, this bad thing doesn't happen un, uncommented upon. But, um, uh, you know, th for, the, for the average layperson who thinks, I mean, you know, and I used to think this when I was, you know, before I was elected, you know, that this is a group of folks, we get together and, you know, I'll s raise my hand and say, I have an idea, and everyone will say, what is it, Dalen? And I tell them, and they're like, that's a great idea, and they clap and they pass it like, like Mr. Smith goes, it's not like that. Um, Unfortunately, first of all, it's a very partisan atmosphere. Mm -hmm. It's more, it's less a collection of individuals than it is two teams. And it's like, you know, you fight for your team often. Now, every once in a while you break ranks or whatever, but it's hard to do. And it's, mm -hmm. there's consequences often. And, uh, you know, more often than not, it's, it's sort of a, a us or them mentality. Uh, and for one of the reasons is the power of being in the majority. Now, if you're in the majority, the com you, you control the committee chairs. The committee chairs d dictatorially decide what bills come in their committee, when they run, what they say. Once bills are out of committee, they go to the floor. The majority party typically dictatorially controls 
what bills come to the floor, what day, when, what, you know. So um, if you're in the minority and you have a committee chair who's not a bipartisan kind of guy, and you say, can you run my bill in the education committee, he might just say, no, and that's pretty much the end of it. Um, so uh, whereas if, you, if you're in the majority and the majority chairman is a member of your caucus, you could go to him and say, hey, could you, I have this bill, it'll make me look good in my district, which is the last thing the other party wants to do. Uh, he'll say, sure, I'll help you out. Mm -hmm. and so, so it's much easier to get legislation considered and moving. There are a couple of, there are two ways around that. Uh, that where a minority person can have some success, and I actually had some success. There's number one is the amendment process. You can offer amendments on the floor. The majority has a lot of tools for stripping amendments and re mm -hmm. inter reverting to other printer numbers and stuff to try to keep amendments off, but there is some play in the system there. And then less effective is something called a discharge resolution, where um, the majority of the House votes to force a bill out of committee onto the floor for consideration. But that never passes. It's theoretically a possibility. And the reason it never passes is even if it's a popular bill that most people support, the committee chairs all oppose it because it undermines their power. If you can get a bill to the floor without the committee chair's approval, then what good is a committee chair? What good is being a committee chair? So, um, you know, committee chairs often vote against bills, the discharge resolutions for bills where they would probably support on the merits, but they, you mm -hmm. know, there's a protection of the institution and the uh, procedures. So um, that doesn't really, that's, I don't, I, certainly not since I've been here. I think it's been decades since the discharge resolution has passed. So you have the amendment process, but certainly being the majority is better. One of the, so that's one of the frustrations is moving legislation. Another frustration is, you know, obviously in, in the House, we pass a lot of stuff, goes over to the Senate, they completely ignore it. Yeah. They're under no obligation to consider anything we send over, or, nor are we for them, but mm -hmm. th they have less stuff they're interested in passing. Um, and so uh, and there's not a very good working relationship between the House and the Senate. So even if you work like a dog and get a bill passed, it's re the Senate just, just never even looks at it. Okay, so that, that's a frustration as well. One of the frustrations of the job is dealing with your own people, your own advocates, because advocates, I've had this experience, advocates tend to be purists. They want 100 percent because that's what they're paid to do. Anything else is a, a gross misjustice and misalignment of the universe. But if you're actually going to move legislation, often you have to compromise. And then your own people are yelling at you, why are you compromising? I wanted a 100 percent mm -hmm. pure bill. And so that is a huge frustration and one that people may not anticipate. Um, and then, you know, the usual... Uh, you know, you run a bill and the, the opposite side, their advocates say a bunch of stuff that's not true about your bill. And, you know, it's, it, that's frustrating. There's a lot. Day to day, this job has an awful lot of frustrations because especially most of us come here uh, wanting to save the world. And then you re get here and you realize the world is a very difficult place mm -hmm. to save. <laughs> and it's short, you know, so what you eventually come to is, is the sort of uh, uh, a sort of homeostasis where you're, you know, you understand the system and you understand that the goal is incremental progress forward and trying to stop going backward and pushing right. forward. A little. It's not huge leaps in most cases all of a sudden. Uh, and it's always, it's almost always a compromise, especially mm -hmm. now we've divided government. So, you know, um, it, there's a lot of frustrations, but there's a lot of rewards as well. Mm -hmm. There's a, um, obviously some bills come with controversy. Um, do you think controversy uh, has a major impact um, on some of the legislations or the legislative process? For example, um, House Bill 288 in 2007-08 regarding hospitals and health care facilities. Um, the controversy of that particular bill, does that impact legislation greatly? Um, is there a lot more um, discussion well, that needs to be done? Yeah, well, controversy, um, controversy obviously means there's opposition, which is point number one, but controversy means often, it often gums up legislation in another way, which is that it doesn't matter if people are for it against it. A lot of people don't want the controversy mm -hmm. for its own sake. I've had people who've supported bills, supported them, mm -hmm. that I was introducing say, why do you have to run this now? Why, why do we have to do this? You know, because if I vote yes, I'm going to make this group unhappy. If I vote no, I'm going to make this group unhappy. Let's just vote for Woodchuck Week. You know, we'll all vote yes. It'll be Woodchuck Week next week and, you know, uh, Woodchuck Awareness Week for people who are <laughs> unaware of woodchucks. And, and um, you know, uh, we all go out to dinner. It's, it's a much easier lifestyle. When you're pushing controversial legislation, I mean, I had my emergency contraception. I had a death penalty bill. 
I had death with dignity bill, which uh, allows uh, assisted suicide in Pennsylvania with uh, court approval, uh, like they do in Oregon. I, I mean, I introduce a lot of controversy because that's why we're here, you know, mm -hmm. um, to, to solve big problems. Now, of course, they, tend, they don't always get solved, but um, but just the, the you know. One of the first things, the questions I get when I talk about a bill often is not, well, what is it, does it do this or that, or is it good or bad this way? It's just, is this going to be controversial? That's the, what they want to know. Mm -hmm. Before they even know, you know, they just, a lot of the people don't want controversy. I actually kind of like controversy. And, uh, you know, uh, when there's a very unpopular thing that I support, I often write an editorial about that. You know, like go out on a limb and public. Like, if you're going to do something con uh, uh, which may be unpopular, a lot of people at least hide. You know, they're like they do it, they leave, and they, you know, hopefully no one will notice them. Whereas I sort of own the issue, mm -hmm. <laughs> write editorials about it, go on talk shows, and you know, I get a lot of hate mail as a result of that. But, um, but I mean, again, that's that's why we're here, and uh, so. Um, you know, hopefully, I'll, hopefully, I'll have the uh, the fortitude to continue to do that mm -hmm. into the future. It's it's never easy, and I'm not perfect. There have been times I've hidden, you know, uh, but because I, I try to pick my battles. But sure. uh, you know, I mean, not everything. I mean, I tr I encourage people to be a profile encourage. Not everything I do is a profile encourage. But you know, we we I think it's like the, what I said earlier about the incremental progress. We should mm -hmm. work on being a little more courageous, a little more bold. You know, uh, keep the ball moving forward. So were you upset um, when um, you had to take your blog off, off offline, Leech Bent? Uh, you know, I don't know. I I, I was uh, I had mixed feelings about it. You know, it, it took, for, and I have been blogging. I blog, blogged uh, from the Denver convention, and uh, frankly, and I'm supposed to continue about the campaign. The problem is I don't need time. Mm -hmm. So you know, from a time management perspective. Uh, you know, but uh, but I do enjoy writing about this experience. Maybe someday I'll write a book. Excellent. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep your viewers uh, notified of that development should it occur. As you're getting ready to leave the uh, leave the house, is there some legislation or or some issues that uh, that you still would like to have seen get through? Yeah, a ton. Uh, uh, um, there's a ton of things. Um, but uh, um, you know, in the Senate, I think I'll have the opportunity to continue that fight. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, the same issues I've talked about: education, healthcare. I mean, we have a costing out study that says we're dramatically underserving our school districts at the state level. We need to fix that. More people. Yeah, you know, in a perfect world, everyone, but every you know, more people every year uh, uh, covered by health insurance mm -hmm. uh, would be good. Uh, you know reducing a bit every year the amount of uh, carbon we're putting into the atmosphere, the amount of pollution, and cleaning up a few streams and cleaning up uh, some uh, abandoned mines, and, you know, just making progress along the way. Um, and then, you know, hopefully one or two times in the course of my career there'll be a big victory where we do a huge thing. I mean, I think mm -hmm. actually the, um, the smoking ban is going to save a lot of lives. Yeah. Um, I think the uh, breast uh, cancer screening bill I passed is going to save lives. So, I mean, that's, that's all good. Um, and so it's uh, just, every, you know, every day is a battle to do a mm -hmm. little more. Um, of those that you mentioned, or maybe even ones that you didn't mention, what do you think is the hardest issue that's before the legislature right now? Hardest in the sense of uh, politically the hardest is ironically redistricting reform mm -hmm. beca or because, you know, we're asking people to give up their own power. Like when, we're, when you're asking people to vote for health care, you may be asking them to do something they don't philosophically agree with, or they may be asking them to vote for something that will be tough to vote for because mm -hmm. they may get some flack for it. But redistricting reform, actually get asking people to give up personal power to, f to guide their careers. That's a hard thing to ask someone to do. Uh, you know. And um, so I, I think that's the toughest because it goes against everything we're hardwired to do as a species. Um, and uh, we've got really got to reach deep down inside ourselves and say, you know what, even if this results in me someday losing my job, um, because I don't get to draw the lines to make sure I keep a perfect district for myself. It's still be it's good for the people to do this, and so I'm hoping, maybe naively, that that's, uh, that can prevail eventually. Of, uh, of your time in the House, what was the, uh, the thing that you enjoyed the most? Um, oh, I really enjoyed, I love floor debate. I also enjoyed the camaraderie. You know, a lot of, uh, I have friends on both sides of the aisle, um, very conservative people. I started a, um, 
something called the Bipartisan Dinner Caucus, and we go out to, you know, because when I got here, people go out to dinner at night because, you know, mm -hmm. they're hungry, but um, it was like a junior high school dance, you know, with the boys over here and the girls over here. I mean, you go into a restaurant, there'd be a table of eight Republicans, then seven Democrats, then nine Republicans, and ten Democrats. It's like, you know, I mean, it was almost embarrassing. So I started a Bipartisan Dinner Caucus once, I'd say once or twice a month when we're up here, we have dinner, and it's, uh, you know, four Democrats, four Republicans, or whatever it is, and... Uh, uh, I've really enjoyed the, the friendships I've made as a result of that and as a result of my service here. I, I um, you know, I just enjoy the people. I mean, some of them are, you know, some of them are crazy. <laughs> yes. uh, really crazy. But, um, but a lot of them were, are, are, you know, very smart, hardworking, thoughtful people and with a good sense of humor. And, and, you know, they're just fun to be around. Plus, it's a beautiful building. So it's fun to come here to work every day. What about the least? What did I like the least? Yes. Well, you know, one of the things in the House, one of the reasons I'm running for the Senate is that we have two-year terms, mm -hmm. which means you get elected, and then, you know, six months later, you have to start running again, essentially. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's very difficult. Uh, one of the things that I've, that's been most difficult for me is I have young children, and I'm frequently away from home when I, when I should be there. And I, I do everything I can to see them every minute I can, and I mm -hmm. bring them to all kinds of events that it's inappropriate to bring them to. Um, because, you know, that's the only way I'm going to get to see them, like right. a Chamber of Commerce awards dinner. I mean, you know, some, it's not a five-year-old's favorite way sure. to spend a couple hours, but, you know, it's just, but, um, so that's been very difficult. You know, we have to spend a lot of time fundraising, which I don't know if you know anything about that process, but it's a horrible, humiliating process, mm -hmm. but you have to do it. You know, it's basically calling a lot of people you don't know for asking them to send you money. So it's like, it's, uh, it's every bit as fun as it sounds. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, people are, and people are very, very helpful, many of them, but it's still, it's very, uh, it's, it, you know, I don't want to ask people for money. I just want to do my job, but, you know, it's part of the job. Um, and uh, so, but the Senate off do it less often. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Um, so I think what I like the le you know, what, what I like the least is the anything that distracts me from the job. I like to, you know, focus on policy and moving policy and debating policy and understanding policy. And things that distract me from it are difficult. And things that keep me away from the family are difficult. And, and so, uh, I'll, uh, you know, uh, hopefully I'll, I'll have a b bit more of a balance in the Senate. Um, as you look back on your time in the House and someone asks you specifically about your time um, in the House, is there a certain story or maybe a couple stories that, that come to mind that you definitely want people to know about? <laughs> oh, geez. I wish Whether you, it's humorous or... Uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 wished you, I wish you had uh, uh, prepped me on that question. Uh, uh, stories, of that, I mean, there are stories, but many of them are, um, you can't tell on... <laughs> Are, you on, are we on cable? But uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. Um, you know, I, I don't know if I have some great specific story, uh, but I can tell you that there are great moments, and there are, uh, you know, fighting really hard. I mean, one of the, one of the, I'll tell you a story. <clears throat> uh, I, I'm a proponent of, le of full marriage rights for gay Pennsylvanians, um, and. Uh, I spoke out on that. I was the only one to speak out on that, for that on the floor. There was a lot of people who opposed the constitutional amendment to ban gay marriage, but they did for other reasons. Mm -hmm. We didn't know. We don't need it. It's going to make it harder to enforce protection from abuse orders. It's on you know, whereas I was the only one to stand up and say, so, uh, say that gay people should have full and equal marriage rights. And so uh, we, we passed a bill, despite my efforts, uh, which banned not only gay marriage, but all recognition of any same-sex couples which was really uh, harsh, they went over to the Senate. The Senate passed a different version, taking out everything but the ban on gay marriage. Mm. And it came back to the House. And I, um, I, which would have easily passed if they rat it, but I came up with the idea that I bet we can get them not to run it if we're creative. So what I did was I said I had great credibility with the, with the rabid anti-gay people because they knew that I was really pro-gay right. rights. And so, you know, they, from my floor debate. So I sent a letter around uh, to everyone. I said, you know, this, this ban on marriage from the Senate, it's still bad. I'm still against it. But it's much better than the other one because we're not going to pass two anti-gay marriages and at least gay couples will still be able to get state money. They'll still be able to get uh, domestic partnership benefits. You know, um, and, uh, you know, it, it, the, 
it will leave open the door for civil unions, and the fact that we considered banning civil unions and didn't would, could lead a court to believe that we intended to have civil unions. Mm -hmm. Like, I put all this stuff in there designed to make them go, oh, my God, we can't pass this. This is, Leach is, you know, right. That we're, and, in fact, I was told in the Republican caucus, where most of these folks are, um, they actually had this discussion. And, they're, and they, they held up my letter, and they say, Leach, he's saying, you know, by passing this, we're going to be approving civil unions. We're going to be approving a domestic partnership. So they didn't pass anything. Mm -hmm. So I like to take some credit for actually prohibiting, single-handedly prohibiting, uh, not prohibiting, but pre preventing uh, any constitutional amendment, which I think would be an abomination. I mean, to me, a constitution is to expand rights and to mm -hmm. protect individual rights, not to contract rights and take people's rights away. So... Um, uh, I like to think that my letter uh, actually stopped them from passing uh, that bill. That was, you know, one of the moments of great triumph. Mm -hmm. There's been there's been a few, um, and uh, you know, certainly there have been, you know, three in the morning caucuses on budgets that are that are always that are always interesting, and um, it's uh, you know it's there, there's always some excitement going on, always mm -hmm. some rumors. We live on rumors here. Most of them turn out not to be true, but we're very. Uh, but that doesn't mean we don't want to hear the latest one, you know. So, but uh, you know, it's been a good time, and I, I have to put together. I have to write a speech, uh, a farewell to the house speech. So I'll start thinking about any stories I have right. that might be a So you can tune in for that. That'll be a, Thank that'll you. be a huge ratings Thanks. bonanza for Appreciate for you. Anyway, um, as you leave, um, do you have any advice? for those who might be interested in, in public service or those even that are newly elected into the House? Yeah. Um, again, learn about incremental change. Work with people. You know, often you can work with people on the other side uh, of an issue. Um, I've come to great compromises on, on a number of issues that, that seemed intractable, three or four I can think of. Um, you know, Form personal relationships mm -hmm. with people because that, you know, when you go to a, a guy, if you're a Democrat, you go to a, a Republican or vice versa, and you say, you know, Jesse, I need your vote on this, or at least can you not speak out against it? If he's never met you before, or if you've been sort of hostile, it's not going to work. But if you have a friendship, you've gone out to dinner, you've maybe, you know, co joked around with him, mm -hmm. asked about his family, you're going to have a much better chance. I mean, personal relationships really matter. Know what you're talking about. Spend some time learning what you're talking about. Be open to changing your mind. Um, I've changed my mind on a couple of issues as a result of debates or discussions mm -hmm. I've had. Um, and, uh, you know, try to learn a lot about, I mean, you, you have to learn a lot about, you have to learn something about a bunch of different areas. But try to learn an awful lot about one or two areas. If you become known as sort of an expert uh, or an authority in a particular area, area, people will defer to you right. on, in that area, and they'll come to you for advice, or they'll, they'll say, you know, how should I vote on this? You know, you'll, you'll have a lot of influence if you, are, if you get the reputation of having knowledge uh, in a certain area. So, I mean, those are sort of the, some of the things I would tell a, a freshman coming in, and, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a learning curve, but uh, uh, over time, uh, it, it, we all we all walk in the first day sort of like in awe, and then like by the fifth month, we all walk in like we own the place. Mm -hmm. So you know, <laughs> that's uh, that'll continue. Any final thoughts? No, only that you know it's a great honor to serve public service. We're made fun of a lot, public servants um, and politicians, and it's easy to make fun of us. We're self promotional. We you know. Um, sometimes we're full of it, especially during election year. You know, we're backslapping everyone. We, you know, and uh, you know, there's a certain caricature that can come out of that. And and and, and caricatures are based often on a grain of truth. Mm -hmm. But that said, uh, the overwhelming majority of people here uh, are here, despite the fact they can make a great deal of money doing something else, a great deal more money. They're p being paid much less. They work very hard. I work 80 hours a week at this job, and that's not when I'm running for election. When I'm running for election, it's more. Right. Uh, and uh, I'm still behind on everything. I mean, this is an extremely hard job. It's an extremely difficult job for people here in the sense that, you, you know, you're away from your family all the time. Uh, and then every, every, every other year, there's someone whose job it is to tell the world what a jerk you are. That's <laughs> their job. So, uh, you know, that's kind of weird when you think about mm -hmm. it. And they're raising money constantly so they can spend it telling the world what a jerk you are. So uh, there's a lot, it's a lot of difficulty in this job. And people who do this job are, are really special people, and I believe. And, um, 
you know, it's easy to make fun of us, and certainly, you know, uh, I've gotten upset at politicians in my life when they've done things I didn't agree with. But I think the people out there should know that, you know, you're being well, most of you, except for the dude in what I won't say, but no, <laughs> mo most of you are being well served and by hardworking, sincere right. people. And uh, that doesn't get said enough, I think, certainly not in the, in the media. Excellent. Representative Dalen Leach, I want to thank you very much for participating in our project. Sure. Um, and we wish you good luck in, in everything that happens in the future. Thank you very much, Jesse.